This video will walk you through a basic overview of your My Language Lab gradebook. The gradebook we have set up is the same for all of our My Language Labs. So even though I am demoing a My Spanish Lab course at the moment, the gradebook settings are the same for any My Language Lab course. Today we'll just be talking about the overview of the gradebook and the default settings that we have set up for you. To navigate to your My Language Lab gradebook, from the Today's View, click on the word Gradebook or choose Grades from the drop-down menu. You'll be brought to your online gradebook for that specific section. And now let's talk about some of the items you might see when you first come to your gradebook. On the left-hand side, you will have your student roster list, along with the names of the students that have enrolled inside your My Language Lab course. You may be wondering how these student names appear in your list. Your students actually enroll themselves into your My Language Lab course when they use your course ID number, or in other words, your section ID number. Once they enroll, their name will automatically appear in your online gradebook. If you see a student's name missing that you know is in your class, that simply means that your student has not taken the time to enroll inside your My Language Lab course. You may also wonder what the name student student means. This name automatically appears in all of your My Language Lab courses. What this is, is if you've noticed inside any My Language Lab course, we have a student view button. You can click on this button and be taken over to the student side of your course, where you can actually complete activities that you have assigned inside your course. If you do go over to the student view and complete activities, your work shows up as student student inside your gradebook. This is a great way for you to play, be able to play around as a student inside your course and how that work will show up on your instructor side. Your students don't know that this is here and the student student data does not factor into any class averages or will any student student data appear on any of the alerts on the today's view. It is purely for the gradebook only. Now let's talk about the left hand side of the page. This area over here is all part of your gradebook, and the gradebook is organized the same exact way as your course content area is. So if you know how to find an activity in your course content, you will know how to find that activity in your gradebook. We typically organize all of our My Language Lab courses by chapter or lesson folder structure. So inside your gradebook, you're also able to get chapter averages of your students' work, along with individual grades per chapter of each activity that they've completed. It's a very important column that is automatically built into your My Language Lab course. It is default named the Course Average column, and I'd like to take a few minutes and talk about this column as it comes in very handy as an instructor for you and also for your students. This Course Average column is a smart column, and think of it as a cumulative average that you will see as your students work through all the activities you have assigned inside your course. This column knows exactly what content you have decided to assign inside your course content area. And this column will roll up an average of all of the assigned activities that you select. It also knows to factor in the due dates, and so it will not penalize a student ahead of time if they have yet to complete an assignment that is due, let's say, next week. But once that due date has passed and a student does not complete the assigned work, they will instantly get a zero in the gradebook since the item is now late, and that zero for not submitting the work in on time will also be factored into this average. So at any point during the course of the semester, you can look at the course average column to see an accurate average of the work your students are doing cumulatively that you have assigned inside your My Language Lab course. And at the end of the semester, you can use this grade as their online homework grade, for instance, for all the work they've completed from all the different chapters or lessons inside your course. One other and last important thing to note about this course average column is that this average column is on a two hour update. This simply means that every two hours this column will recalculate and include any new grades that have recently posted to your gradebook. Now I want to make a very clear distinction here. The gradebook itself is not on a two hour update. As soon as your students complete an activity that you have assigned inside your My Language Lab course, their grade is instantly recorded in the gradebook inside one of the chapter folders where that activity is located. You can see that grade as soon as they complete it. 
However, that grade will not roll up into a course average until the next two hour update. Now, please also know that this average column can also be customized. You can change the name along with if you don't want certain items that you're assigning that get a grade to count towards this average, you can actually tell the gradebook not to include those grades in this course average column. We have a separate video on how to customize this course average column, so please refer to that video if you have questions or want to learn more about how to do that. Now on to the different chapters in the gradebook and how to navigate through those. On the left hand side of your page, you will see a list of all the different chapters or lessons organized the same way as in your course content. You can choose any chapter you'd like just by clicking on the name. Now you're navigating through your gradebook by chapter. You always know where you are in your My Language Lab gradebook by the white box that appears towards the top of the page. For instance, I am inside the Chapter 1 folder of this Spanish course. But again, this is also applied to any of our other languages as well. You will see a series of subfolders on the left that you can then navigate into that all belong to that specific chapter content. Before we go further into a subfolder, I want to take a quick moment and talk about this folder average column you're seeing right here. Every single folder in your gradebook will also have an average column as well. This folder average column works very similarly to the course average column, except for one very key factor. The folder average column will only roll up an average of the items assigned inside that folder. So for example, I am inside the chapter one folder of my gradebook. So any items that I chose to assign out of any of these subfolders will roll up into an average and be shown right here. In other words, this can be called your chapter one average per student of assigned activities. And you can come here at any time to see per chapter how your students are doing inside that chapter of assigned work. If you would like to see specific activities that you've assigned and the grades associated to those, all you need to do is navigate into one of the subfolders that you assigned out of inside your course. For example, the Student Activities Manual folder is a very popular folder to assign out of. By clicking on that folder, you're now brought into the Student Activities Manual folder for that specific chapter, as you can tell from the white box, and notice that that folder also has an average as well. This folder average inside the Student Activities Manual folder is a roll-up of an average of all the assigned Student Activities Manual activities that have been assigned inside your course. Then notice too, as you scroll across, you'll see the names of activities that you have chosen to assign inside your course, along with any grades that go associated with them. Now one thing I'd like to point out with our default settings for our gradebook is that we've set up the online gradebook to only show you the assigned only activities. So for example, if you have a, not assigned activities from a specific chapter yet in your course and you go into your gradebook, you will not see any columns yet. As soon as you make those assignments in your course content area, the columns will automatically appear in your gradebook. You can change this default setting by going to your global preferences under the grading feature. And you can also at any point change your filter to, to show all items as well. Even if you change this filter status, the average columns will only still roll up the assigned only. Again, that can be customized as well with the flexibility of our gradebook, but as a default, the average columns will only roll up the assigned items that you have chosen to assign inside your course, no matter what your filter status is set to. You may also notice you see some symbols inside the gradebook. To see what these symbols mean, you always have a legends button towards the top part of the page. If you click this legends button, you will see a breakdown of all the different symbols that you could possibly see inside your gradebook and, the, and what they mean. Grades showing below a 70% will show up in red and with a red triangle. This means that that student did not pass that activity. Their grade still counts in the gradebook and if the activity was assigned, then it will be included in their folder average and subsequent course average. You can hover your mouse over any grade inside the gradebook and notice you have a gray options arrow. Click it and you will see you have multiple options for that specific grade for that specific student. You can choose to edit the grade and override the score that the computer gave the student. 
You can also view the actual submission of the student. Let's take a look at what that would look like. This will pull up the exact submission for the student that you just hovered your mouse over for that specific grade. You can see the answers the student put in, and you can also see any feedback that was given to the student as well. You can also see a history grade of the student, and you can also send an internal message directly to the student as well regarding this grade. One other important feature that you might want to utilize inside your gradebook is that each activity has its own options menu as well. This options menu goes specific to that activity that's named next to it, but notice now that you can view all submissions. This is a very popular feature in our My Language Lab gradebook, as this view all submissions will allow you to, to view all your students' work for that specific activity and the multiple times that they completed the activity or tried to attempt the activity. Let's take a quick look. If I choose view all submissions, if I choose the options menu and choose view all submissions, a new window will open. I will see my student roster on the left hand side and I will see any grades associated to this activity. If I click on a plus sign next to a student's grade, notice the detailed information that then appears to me. I can see however many times a student opened and completed the activity. You can also see if the student even opened the activity but didn't, didn't finish it for grading. In this particular case, the student opened the activity twice and completed it both times for a score. If you click on the date and time, you will then see that specific submission recorded here. You can toggle to different students and even different submissions. If a student hasn't completed an activity, you can, when you click on their name, you'll see that the activity has not been started yet. When you're finished, you can click close and be brought right back to your gradebook where you can choose to view all submissions from a, another activity. One other last thing, to navigate through the gradebook, you can always click the back button or the green arrow. Another quick way to navigate through the gradebook is to utilize the white box itself. If you click on the arrow found in the white box, you will see a drop down menu of your gradebook and you can easily jump into a different chapter or by clicking the plus sign next to the name of a chapter folder, you can quickly jump into another area of your gradebook altogether and quickly see the grades of your students from that area as well. For instance, I just jumped into chapter two of the student activities manual. If you ever need to get back to the top of the gradebook where we first started our session about the course average column, you can keep clicking the back button or just click the My Course button right here in the white box itself. You'll be brought right back up to that course average column where we first started in the gradebook. This concludes the overview of your My Language Lab gradebook.